I'm John Archibald here with Reckon, and today we have Tommy Battle, Mayor of Huntsville, gubernatorial candidate, and uh, the Tennessee Valley Authority, I guess. Uh, campaign's on in earnest now, isn't it? Uh, campaign's on in earnest. We're about, about what, close to 90 days out from election in June 5th. Everybody thinks June 5th, well, it's a long time away. It's not that far. Well, I guess I have to start with the news here. You kind of uh, created a stir on your blog uh, with a sure. opening sort of salvo, said Governor Kay Ivey, uh, what was the term? Uh, spent too much time at talk cocktail parties rather than uh, governing. I, Go I then. think you know, um, last Tuesday night we're we're in Montgomery and there's a there's a forum in uh, Greenville and so we go down to the forum in Greenville. It's only 40 miles from Montgomery, so it's not far. And we went down to Greenville. 161 people show up, and it was really a great thing to be able to talk about election and what you want to do, what you want to do to help Greenville and the community around there, but what you want to do to help the whole state of Alabama. Uh, great, uh, great conversation to be had. Uh, and uh, we get back to Montgomery, and, and uh, Governor Ivey does, does not uh, is not in Greenville at, at that, and we find that she's been at some of the cocktail parties uh, going around Montgomery. And, you know, I think that that, that version of my blog was uh, much easier than the other versions that I wrote, the very first one, because uh, the perception of Montgomery uh, is such that, you know, you leave a session and you go to a cocktail party, and um, then you, and there's two other cocktail parties to go to that night. And, you know, nobody else does that in government. Uh, when we get finished with a city council meeting, the city council doesn't go down and have a cocktail party put on by somebody who might have an interest in what you do at some point. I think ours might. Yeah, maybe. Uh, or maybe if you're a news reporter, after you get finished, you go down no, to the cocktail party. Not anymore. But, uh, but, you know, really the interesting thing is that it gives you a perception that, um, that, that um, uh, that the people aren't you know, aren't the ones that, that that really matter. That it's more uh, the interest groups and everything, and and I think that's what I was trying to put across in there. Well, well are you saying what other campaigns are only whispering that uh, the governor go has too many cocktails? No, no, uh, that would be I improper to say and something I have no 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 knowledge of. Very good. Well, you you've campaigned. Uh, Really, on on uh, what you've done in Huntsville and how you sure. can kind of translate that to the rest of the state. Yeah. Uh, uh, of course, Huntsville has some advantages that the rest of the state doesn't. Whether that's uh, federal funding uh, and sure. education, those sorts of things. Yeah. How does that? How do you make that translate into places, in the Black Belt, other regions where those things don't apply? You know, the, the interesting thing is, is we've gone around the state. We, you know, we have a great state and we have great people, great things. Uh, and, and I talked to him about, you know, when people come to Alabama, they come to Alabama and they have images of, uh, of things that they have prior images. They have images of maybe the 1960s. They have images of maybe the Beverly Hillbillies or something. And they come to Alabama. And as they come here, whether they come to Huntsville, they come to Mobile, they come to Dothan, they come and they visit. And the last things they say is you put them in the car and as they go away. And you've had the same things happen here in Birmingham. You get in the car to, to drive off and they say, wow, I had no idea. And that's the thing, that's the image that we got to get across to Alabama. We started um, in, in Huntsville, we did this thing, Huntsville Smart Place. We wore little buttons, Huntsville Smart Place. And, you know, we need to get to the place where we do Alabama Smart Place. Mobile, we're building the most highly technical destroyer in the world at Austell. Uh, uh, Dothan uh, International Beam is doing uh, processed wood and laminate that's going to challenge the steel industry. Um, Montgomery's doing the cyber defense for the Air Force. Uh, here in Birmingham, they're making cures for cancer. Uh, Muscle Shows has made music that's heard all over the world. And uh, in Huntsville, we're you know, building engines to take man back into deep space and maybe take us to Mars and get us back. So when you look at it, you know, this state does things that nobody else does. And I think part of our image and part of our, our thing is that we sell ourselves short too much. We need to talk about Alabama, a great place, a smart place. And we need to talk about, sell that, number one, we've got to make sure that our people understand that. And that's what we did, you know, uh, in, in our community. Make sure our people understand it, then, then go to the outside, outside Alabama and start talking to them about it. So that when their perceptions of Alabama come in, that they have perceptions of, uh, of shipbuilding, they have perceptions of cyber defense, they have perceptions of new technologies coming out. Uh, of cancer cures, of uh, rocket engines that go into space, of music that's heard all over the world, is it would be a great thing to have those perceptions of Alabama rather than the ones that we have now. Yeah, and, and I don't really want to debate you on that, but we also have a state where we're perpetually in the bottom five when it comes to whether, you know, diabetes, cancer, 
shooting deaths, uh, and so you're education, those that. sorts of things. You and we, we, we talked about that yeah. in the past, but how do you reconcile those two things? And I agree that when people come, they always say, this is so much better than I thought. What did Mary Poppins say? Accentuate the positives, uh, and, and I do. You know, we but don't ignore the negatives. We accentuate the positives. We look at the challenges that we have, and I think that's a very important thing to do as government. You look at the challenges and you address those as you do that. Right. Uh, you know, healthier lifestyle. We've done that in, in, in Huntsville. You can't tell it from me, but you can tell <laughs> it from a lot of other people. Uh, we we do that, and that's that's the main cause of diabetes coming in. Uh, you know. Uh, and, and a lot of other things that we really, you know, we have challenges, of course, but we have great things happening too. Uh, you, going back to what you were saying earlier about the many great things that are happening here in Birmingham, Huntsville, Mobile, all these places mm -hmm. that are, are having these things. Uh, it's always curious to me that, that much of the success in all those areas and much of the ways certainly Birmingham survived through UAB really involves a lot of federal funding, really involves mm -hmm. a lot of support from the government, yeah. uh, yet when you run for office, you can't run, I mean, you have to run sort of against that sort of notion in order to win in this state. So how do you reconcile that? Oh, listen, you know, you, you, won't, have, you won't have all the support you can have, you know, whether you have a federal side and then whether you go and uh, work to diversify your workforce and diversify yourself. That's what we've done in, uh, done in our area. You know, we have a great federal arsenal sitting up there. Uh, Redstone Arsenal is a, is a great partner for us. But we decided uh, 10 years ago that we were going to diversify and we wanted to, you know, get away from having all our eggs in one basket. So to diversify, we ended up bringing in Remington, we ended up bringing in uh, Polaris, GE Aviation, uh, you know, uh, Rocketdyne, the rocket plant. Uh, we, we ended up bringing in to Toyota Mazda. And it's been a great diversification um, away from having all your eggs in one basket. Those eggs in one basket, you want to polish them every day and make sure that they still produce and that chicken's still producing. But the other side, you want to make sure that that's working well too. And if you've got both of them, then you've provided a safety net for your community. I noticed that the mayor of Birmingham yesterday, uh, you probably saw that after the lieutenant less governor. Chat. Yeah, yeah, talked to, to Delta and said less chat yeah. after the lieutenant governor in Georgia said, uh, uh, complained about his NRA statements. Would you like to have Delta in Huntsville? Oh, Delta. Um, you know, when we do our SWOT analysis, that is the one place that we come up short on SWOT analysis, direct flights, uh, direct flights coming out of our area. I'd love to have Delta in Birmingham. Uh, direct flights coming out of this area going all over the world. Um, that, is a, that, that is something that drives in a whole economy. You know, companies, sales companies that need to be close to an airport so they can get all over the world to sell. And those sales jobs are high paying jobs. That would be a great thing for Birmingham also. Regardless of their uh, ending their relationship with the NRA? Um, you know, uh, regardless of ending, either way, I, I think that, you know, uh, I think that uh, Randall was very, very smart saying let's chat. I think it's a good chat to have. Um, what are your thoughts on arming teachers? You know, in our area, we've done it a little bit differently. Um, we ended up, you know, um, seven years ago, uh, we went through the tragedies of UAH. We had a we had a shooting at UAH, and our Huntsville police came in and took over the investigation and took over, um, you know, the the final SWOT analysis of it and everything. And six people were killed there. Uh, our neighboring community and the Madison City Schools had a shooting uh, where a young person was was killed and very, you know. And, out, it, just a, a crazy thing. So we started out of that. We started doing what I guess you would call hardening our, our facilities. Um, hardening our facilities meant that you know we have three accesses into uh, parking uh, when you come into your parking, and and then once everybody gets in, you limit it down to one in, ingress egress uh, the, into the building. You have have multiple entrances until everybody gets in. Once everybody gets in, you have one entrance into the building, uh, so that you have to come, you have to buzz yourself in, they have to see who you are to let you in. Uh, after you get in, you go sign in, you get a t sticker, they know who's in the building, who's not uh, students or teachers, and uh, know where they're going, and, uh, and they escort them there. Uh, and then we have police officers in each school. Uh, and those police officers are really some of our most mature police officers. They're some of our best police officers, and uh, they're there uh, to make sure that the kids understand what law enforcement is about, and also gives the young students a chance to, to relate to them, but also for the safety of the students. And um, I, I think that, that that method is probably a little bit better uh, than what you're, you know, what you're trying to do, uh, metal detectors and everything else. Um, you know, somebody's got to man the metal detector, somebody's got to do this. Uh, um, I th 
think that what we've seen has been pretty proven to work, and, and I'd like to see us expand that around the state. I, I was interested in the bill, uh, a couple of bills, one by Dick Brubaker and a companion by Patricia Todd, uh, sort of died in committee last week, that would have reduced penalties for mel marijuana possession mm -hmm. uh, so as not to, not to legalize, but to, to, yeah. to avoid people sort of ruining in their life with a young mistake or to yeah. fill up the prisons. Yeah. What do you think of what do you think of that? You know, uh, the, the whole prison system is is a question mark. You know, number one, you got mental health. Number two, you got who should be in, who should be out, how, who you should be spending thirty nine thousand dollars a year on uh, housing. And um, there, there's a lot of questions about where where the whole prison system is. Um, I have a concern because of the opioid crisis. You know, does marijuana lead to the opioid crisis? Um, you know, there's been some empirical studies that say yes, there's been some that say no. Um, I, would, I would probably um, veer more towards the, the, um, the staying strong on, on marijuana because marijuana leads that next step, which is opioids, which is killing, you know, in, in our community is, is killing, you know, 10 to 14 people a week. Uh, and it's something that, you know, we have not been able to get a handle on uh, throughout the United States. It's a nationwide problem and it's a statewide problem. Um, I'd probably veer towards the conservative side of that uh, rather than uh, opening, up, opening up the next, next stage. But it is something that, you know, we need to have some, our mental health, our sheriffs, our law enforcement look at and, and answer the question of who needs to be in jail. Does that mean uh, that you would not consider uh, legalization as a revenue generator? Uh, yes, that means I would not consider that. How about the, lottery? Yeah. Lottery, you know, lottery is a financial tool. Uh, I think the people of the state need to vote on it. We've talked about it forever and ever, and they need to vote on it, say yes or no. Uh, two things need to happen. We need to, you know, if they vote yes, we've got to make sure that we have a very fair and impartial uh, commission that runs it so that um, the money goes where it's supposed to go. And then secondly, where does the money go? Uh, you know, and, and in my book, my money would get, be going towards um, uh, towards uh, a two-year college system where some of the students coming out who need just want certifications, want uh, uh, some of the advanced manufacturing qualifications could have, have a chance to go to school. And also it needs to go to the four-year colleges where everybody has a chance to go to a four-year college. A four-year college is getting so expensive today that it's very hard to, to do that. Um, you know, but I think that people need to vote on it because it is a, it's, it's a change in what we do and people need to vote and say yes or no. What do you think the biggest problem facing the state is? Um, our biggest problem facing the state right now is leadership. Um, and I think leadership comes down to it is ethical leadership, is people believing in, um, in the governor, the lieutenant governor, the secretary treasurer, all the people who are up in executive offices and the legislature and believing that they're there for the good of the people of Alabama. You know, that's a hard thing to communicate. That's a hard thing to get across to people, but um, I don't believe that the, I think there's a big feeling that, you know, everybody's there to get theirs. And, uh, and that is something that, you know, we've got to, we've got to work on, we've got to change. Uh, that's one reason I, I had my little rant on the, on the, on the cocktail parties and everything, is that we need to change that perception of Montgomery of the Capitol Hill area. We need to change it to where they're hardworking, they come in to do a job, they do a job, they go home. Uh, where they, they, are, they are there to, um, to make a difference in Alabama and that the people of Alabama believe that, that those people are there to do that. That to me is uh, kind of a vote of no confidence of the, um, of the Capitol Hill group and in some way we've got to turn that around. It's going to be a hard thing to do. A few do. ethics bills down there in that floor. Yeah. You got feelings you know, on uh, Do you need to legislate morality or do you just know not, not to, to do right and wrong? You Based know? on our history, yeah. I think you need <laughs> to legislate something. <laughs> you may have to. Well, but, uh, what, know, what separates Tommy Battle yeah. from the rest of the pack here? Um, I, I think the thing that separates me is, I guess, uh, I've been there, done that. Uh, when you start looking at it, you know, we've got a a uh, track record that is is a proven track record. We've we produced jobs, 24,000 jobs over the last 10 years. We've produced 
uh, investment in our community. Uh, we, took on, we took on education and we've done a pretty good job with it. Have we finished? No, we still got work to do, but we've done a pretty good job of taking on education and, and getting a plan so that we can, we can have a better education system for our young people. Um, we've, we've taken on the, the things that help you uh, continue to grow jobs and grow and expand, expand economy, which is your infrastructure, which the state's going to have to take, uh, take on. You know, all those things have, uh, I've, I've got a proven track record with it. We've been able to make accomplishments and, um, you know, and those things don't happen just in nine months. Uh, those things happen over a 10 year period. They happen from starting to putting your foundation building blocks in place and 10 years ago by going out and uh, we, we went to a, a, a lot of companies and a lot of businesses and we doubled down on our economic development during 2008, 2009 when there was a recession going on and nobody else was expanding. And we doubled down on it because we knew that it was a cycle and that it was cyclically it was gonna come out. And when the cycle came up, all of a sudden we were ready to expand and we were ready to bring in jobs and bring in industry and, and it worked. And finally, tell me one thing about you that nobody knows. Um, I guess one thing about me that nobody knows, Ms. Battle knows pretty much everything about me. Uh, now tell but, me something from Ms. Battle, no, I'm just kidding. But most people uh, that, uh, that I love to barbecue. Uh, I'm, I'm an old barbecuer from, uh, uh, have been on a barbecue team until I became mayor, which doesn't leave much time to do that. Is this North Alabama barbecue We're, style? Oops. You got the oops white was sauce our name. There? Outstanding Order of the Pig Society was the name of our group. And we went all over the southeast and we'd go to barbecue contests. We did okay in some. We, we bombed out in some, but we had a great time. But um, that, was, that was my kind of uh, relief valve. That was a good way to go out and, and do, do some things that you got to do in community. You got to uh, do some community things that would raise money for different things, the church items at ch church. So those were always good. Well, we're going to need to test your skills sometime. All right, come on. We'll Appreciate do it. you coming by, Mayor. Thank Pleasure you. Pleasure to have you. Tommy Battle.